The Muka Show is the third show of autumn in the two dales of Swaledale and Upper Wensleydale. It takes place on the first Wednesday of September, this year after the Moorcock Show. The needs of dogs are catered for. The show field is situated just to the north of the village of Muka, a short distance from the River Swale, which flows in the valley behind Kisden down from Keld. The weather is dry and quite warm. The show is very popular locally and draws a crowd. Many attend from all over Britain and some come from around the world. The renowned silver band from Muka play at the event. <laughs> Gale Mill Trust are here demonstrating woodworking techniques and selling locally made wood products including this bench. William and Claire Lambert head up the team.
Profits are being donated to the Fell Rescue and Air Ambulance. The table was made during a woodworking demonstration at Wreath Show. It's obviously a very good table, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Gail Mill made it. I know this is work in this table. Tony Routh, the last apprentice at Gail Mill, is talking to the visitors at the stand. I haven't. Local businesses such as Cars Billington from Hawes are at the show also. Peter Rowe walks around extracting money from the show visitors for the Swaledale Mountain Rescue Team. Muka Show is a sheep show and in particular the Swaledale breed. Walking to look at the sheep pens I realise the judging has taken place. The coveted rosettes represent the best of the breed in its true home. One of the stewards for the judging is still here. We meet up with John Fothergill, the hill farmer. Have you been to any of the other shows, John? I went to Kiel's. Yeah. Well, that is. It's a bit of DIY at home to do as well. It's a bit of You didn't go to Wreath or... No. No, I didn't go to Moorcock. You went, went over there, didn't you? Yeah. 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 We pulled in, we were going oh, to work. Well done. And then we changed our mind. We went to a shop. Uh, there's a place there where they, they bought all the things from Mardale, you know, that, yeah. the lake. Yeah. 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 The Swaledale Tops command a high price at market. The rosettes really count at the auction marts. A hill farmer may spend a considerable part of his working life perfecting his Swaledale flock. A professional hand is cast over this sheep. Mums and their children have their chance to compete at the show. It's the fancy dress. Robert Clarkson, a farmer all his life from Swaledale, is one of the stewards helping the judges. The sentiment on this plaque, I am sure, is echoed in many families. The judge's job is not an easy one. Farming theme should go down well.
The rescue of the young teenagers in the Far East by the British cave divers is celebrated by James, who is the winner of the fancy dress. His mother was born in Muka and used to play in the Muka band. Peter Rowe is the commentator for the afternoon fell races. Peter was brave enough to take us caving and rock climbing 30 plus years ago. Peter has an impressive experience of TV. He has appeared as a central character in many documentary series about mountain rescue. I think we saw a bit of you in Sheep Rescue. Yeah. Doctor, doctor, I've damaged my fingernail. That was that sheep. Yeah. That's cut that. That's cut that bit out. The language is foul, that one. Oh, because you, oh, the sheep actually did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, However, out. you have to speak. Yes. I'll have to do this now. Yes. The fell race for the juniors is about to start. So one missing to the junior fell race. We need them to come here now, otherwise they'll set off without you. Whilst we wait, a chance to once again listen to Muka Silver Band. ready for the start. Okay, all the, the stuff, that's ready to go. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> and the first one home. The juniors are surprisingly quick to return. And the first girl home is Harriet. Well done, Harriet. Was that a good race? Yes. Yeah. Well done, mate. She came last last year. Yeah. So that's a huge improvement. Well done. Look forward to you next year. Come on. Nearly there. Good girl. Well done, Well done, Sid. Keep going. Where do you live, it? Harry? Kelled. You live at Keld? Oh, we can't be more local than that. Well done, Maggie. And, and the, the winners, winners were Helen Oz and Sophia. Sophia. That's, That's the answers for the country quiz are on display now. now. Thank, Thank you very much for the country quiz, for raising the money for the mountain rescue. rescue. And it's much appreciated. And thank you everybody who's contributed to us so far this, this year. If you've got uh, any, any loose change or notes, checks, we take anything, even euros, please uh, drop into the Mountain Rescue team once you've got a chance. Thank you very much. 
It's now the turn of the under 14s and under 17 year old runners who are running the fell race together. Yeah, the under 14s and the under 17s are going to be racing together. So it's the junior fell race and the under 17s as you'll see in your cap logs. There'll be the girl, first girls, first boys. And in the junior fell race, the Wilson Trophy for the first competitor home living in the district. And in the under 17, the R. Dakin Trophy for the first competitor living in the district. They'll be going across the fields, over the river, straight up the hillside to the marshals, which will be in the high vis jackets. Turning, in, turning in those marshals and then heading across the diagonal path on the right hand side and then back into the fields. Uh, gentlemen, can you please clear the way for the mountain rescue race? All the way through the field and down, please. Keep it clear. Otherwise, they will run you over. On your marks, get set, go! There'll be the girl, first girls, first boys. And in the, the climb is steep and everyone slows to a walking pace. The under 14s turn at the marshal with the high vis jacket, whereas the under 17s continue to the skyline before turning. The top of the hill is bathed in sun. <laughs> On the return, there is a mix of under 14s and under 17s, both boys and girls. Come on, boys. No one's having a race at the end of it. Don't be trying. The next fell race is for the adults, including the veterans. Right, the, uh, there are 67 competitors here. Everybody knows the course, everybody ready to go. Usual start. Yeah. On your marks, get set, go! Go on, Dan! Come on! Come on. The climb to the top of the fell slows everybody down to a walking pace. the field begins to separate out. The turning point is by the marshals. At this point, the runners turn right to run along the skyline. After a short run, the next stage is downhill. Some take a different route before reaching the path and turning left diagonally down the hill towards the river keeping from breaking your neck and or various bones in your body is the challenge.
the field next to the show field is a welcome sight for the runners. An interview. The sun comes out at this point on the track for a short spell only. The ladies are now returning, very much in competition with the men. Graham Deduca, a retired senior police officer from North Yorkshire Police Force, makes it back to the field. He is one of the many veterans running the race. He lives in Upper Wensleydale at Gale. Well, Graham, how many races have you done before today? Well, that is the first time I've run the Muka Schofell race. In fact, yeah. it's the first time I've run any fell race. I have done many years ago several road races, but yeah. nothing like that. Yeah. So how was it? Uh, it was as hard. <laughs> It was as hard as it looks, actually. Lung bursting going up, and then coming down, you've all your concentration on not losing your footing, because you can run too fast and get a bit top-heavy. Yeah, so you're, you're trying your best to get up as fast as you can, and coming down as fast as you can without breaking your neck. Exactly, so. yeah. Do you think that all the training you did before paid off with the dog? Well, I would never have been able to have done it without th that training. I don't think I could have done any better for more training, but I couldn't have done it at all without the amount of training I did. And poor old Kenny, who lives next door, um, he'll be glad of a rest now because he's been out on every, every run I've done so far in the last six months. Yeah. And uh, he hasn't walked for months, he's had to run. So you've not been a dog walk, you've been a dog runner. Yeah, I've been a dog runner. The dog is now six inches shorter on each leg than he was in March. <laughs> exactly. And have you lost any weight? Uh, just over two stone, I would say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's through dieting, uh, cutting down on alcohol and running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what did you do before? Have you been a runner in well, your youth? Yeah, many, many years ago. I was, a, I was a, an average club runner. I ran marathons, half marathons, 10 miles, 10 Ks. Uh, not with any uh, ability to compete with the winners, but but to compete against my own time. And that's very much what today was about, really, just to see if I could do it and do it as fast as I could. Well, yeah. you're now a, a veteran, oh, um, yeah. as far as the running is concerned. Yes. You must have been possibly the first veteran at all. I, I doubt it, because <laughs> it was quite a mature field. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, I think a good percentage of, of the senior race were people in, in one veterinary, veterinary, veteran, one veterinary category or another, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. But you've enjoyed it, that's the main I've thing. I've enjoyed it, now it's over. I bet you have, it's like a cold shower. I, I'll enjoy the good pint of Askrig Bitter later this evening and look back on that. Of course, you live in Gale, uh -huh. near Hawes, yeah. so you're very local to this area now. Yeah, so apparently to be classed as a local for this race, you've got to come from Swaledale. So I'm an, exactly. in, I'm an interloper from over the fell, but I do feel a sense of local pride. Um, very much so. Yeah, great, great show, great day, and a great day in beautiful weather. And uh, I could hear the bra Muka Brass Band, a silver band, I could hear them halfway up the hill. Very yeah. quintessentially, quintessentially Yorkshire Dales. And it yeah. was pushing you up. It was helping me up a lot, yeah. Anyway, congratulations. Yeah. Excellent. And the main thing is taking part. It is, it? it is, and not breaking your neck. Exactly. <laughs> now for a word with Ernest Whitehead and Doreen, his wife. 
Ernest has been the chairman of the show for many years. Have you enjoyed the day? Very much so. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Go. Couldn't have been better. Yeah. Lovely day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of the best shows. And first, Probably the most people we've had, place. apart from the 100th show in... And he was first at the top. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. The most. yeah. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Doreen was the caterer for the show's lunch. I came... And first place lady is Christy Hall. What set it all off was when Alan Blade got married. Yeah. And, and he wanted first me to do the wedding the reception. And he met when he married Jean. Yeah. Her father was secretary, wasn't he? And when he came to pay for right. the wedding... Senior man, senior man. I'm pleased with that, Doreen. You made a good job. Would you like to do Milk or Show? No, sorry. And I said to him, what do you mean, do Milk or Show? I had a clue what he meant. And he said, do lunch. And I came and I did it for what? 30 years you did. 30 years. But I got best prize out of it because I got Ernest out of it. (laughs) <laughs> so, so you're best in show, Ernest, is that right? It's going to some people, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the much appreciated Muka Silver Band players out. <laughs>